Number 28. Write the molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations for the following reactions, and then we have letter B. So in this case, we have to write the molecular, total ionic, and net ionic for H3PO4 aqueous plus CaCl2, calcium chloride. Okay, so the first thing that we always going to do is we're going to always find the molecular equation, and then from the molecular, you can get the total ionic, and then from the total ionic, you can get the net ionic. So it's always flown like that. So the first thing is we're going to try to find the molecular equation. Okay, so I'm just going to put molecular on over here. And let's just start off with what they gave us. We need to react phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4. And they tell us that that's aqueous, so cool. And that's reacting with calcium chloride, CaCl2. And that's also aqueous. We have to find the products. Now, there's a couple of things here, right? I noticed that I have two compounds, right? And anytime that you're reacting two compounds together, this is just a fancy double replacement reaction, right? Or double displacement, whatever you want to call it. But basically, we have to find out the ions that were in these two compounds, especially if we want to find the net ionic equations. So we have to find out what were the two ions that came together to form H3PO4. Now remember, there's always one split between a compound, right? But the question is, is, is there a split between the H and the PO4? Is there a split between these two guys, right? This is where your knowledge of polyatomics come into play, right? We learned that way, way, way back. So I can spot out that PO4 is a polyatomic, right? PO4 is phosphate. So I know that polyatomics always like to stick together. So the break has to be between the hydrogen and the phosphate. Also, I know that the break is there because I see an H in the front of the compound. If you see an H in the front of a compound, 99% because there's always got to be an exception, but 99%, you can say that this compound is an acid, all right? So hydrogen in the front, you could pretty much make sure that it's an acid. Not all the time, though. There's always got to be some, some uh, exceptions in chemistry. And when you have an acid, it always breaks up into H and then the rest. So that's another reason why I know that the break is between H and then the polyatomic. So now let's just find out what those ions are, right? Remember, use the subscripts, but the four is the polyatomic, so there was only one phosphate. So I'm going to use the subscripts three and one, because there was three hydrogens and one phosphate. The four is part of the phosphate. Use those to crisscross back up, right? This three crisscrossed up, telling me that phosphate was a negative three. And then this one crisscrossed up, telling me that the H was a plus one. And you guys know that pluses are in the front, negatives are the back, right? So the ions that came here, and maybe I'll just write it down here, was H plus one coming in with the PO4, three minus. And then just, you know, do a check, right? But phosphate always has a three minus charge, and the H, since it's in group one, it's a plus one. We're going to do the same thing here. Let's find out what those ions are. So if I write down CaCl2, no polyatomics here, right? So I'm going to say that I have one calcium and two chlorines. I'm going to use those subscripts to get the charges. This one tells me that chlorine was a negative one, and this two tells me that calcium was a plus two. So I have Ca2 plus and Cl minus one as the ions that made calcium chloride. That's the hardest part, guys. Everything is just like tedious work. But if you guys have your ions correct, the rest should flow nicely. So now, what are we doing? Well, what's a double replacement reaction? I like to think of it as the outers go with outers and the inners go with inners. So the if you think of this in terms of like a box that you wrote, 
the outer ions, which would be the H plus and the Cl minus, go together. So the outers with the outers. And then the inners with the inners. So the PO4 is now going to make a compound with the Ca plus. And those are your two products for your uh, product side. So let's write them out. Doesn't matter which one you write first. I'll do the H plus first. So we have H plus combining now with Cl minus. H was a plus one, Cl was a minus one. Use those charges crisscross down now to get the compound. One chlorine, and this one tells me that I need one hydrogen. So I have HCl. And that should be sending out flags, guys, right? What kind of compound is HCl? Well, yeah, right? If you said that there was a hydrogen in front, it's definitely an acid, right? So I'll say acid. But HCl is on your list of strong acids. There are six of them. So I can say that this is a strong acid. But now, when we go over here, right, we said that H3PO4 was an acid. However, is it a strong acid or a weak acid? Is this one on your list of six? No, it is not. So this, even though it was an acid, now I'm going to classify this as a weak acid. And that's going to come into play in a little bit. Okay. Now we just got to figure out the next compound, right? HCl plus what? Well, here's my other two ions. And remember, positives come first and then negatives. So I'm going to combine Ca2 plus with PO4 3 minus. Use those now charges to crisscross down. This two told me that I need two PO4s, and maybe I'll do it in a different color, right? Two PO4s. And this three told me that I need three calciums. So the compound that I make is Ca, right? And now since I have two phosphates, I have to use parentheses. So CaPO4, two. And let me just bring this over. Let's see if I can, there we go, just so that we're not off the page. Okay. Because now we need to add a couple of things. We now need to add a states, right? So HCl, is that a liquid, gas, solid, or aqueous? Since I have a group one metal, right? This is your solubility rules. Since you have a group one metal, you are aqueous, right? And all your strong acids and your strong bases are going to be aqueous, okay? That means that they're going to break down. Now, for this one, calcium phosphate, we got to go to the solubility rules, right? That's, a, that's a, a sheet of paper, right? Or if you're using your phone or computer, right? It's just a chart. But you'll see on there, right, that it will say that your PO4s, your phosphates, are always insoluble. So that means that generally they, they will be a solid. They will be an S. Except when grouped with group 1, or ammonia, which is NH4+. Now, do we have an exception? Our ion that's with phosphate is calcium. Is calcium a group one? No, it's not. It's a group two. And is calcium uh, ammonia? No, obviously not, right? So this would not be an exception. So therefore, this would be a solid. I'm just going to erase this idea here, actually. Um, no, we, we, we got this. Maybe I'll just, eh, that's fine. I won't erase it just so that you guys have it. Now, there's a couple of other things. We have to balance this equation. In order to go to our total ionic, I need to just make sure that I have this balanced. So we've done tons of balancing, right? So let's just kind of, kind of see if we, we got this right. I'm just going to pick out things that look a little weird here or different. On my left-hand side, I have one phosphate, right? And on my product side, I have two of them. So that's not balanced. So I need to put a number in front of here, right? And what times one will get me two? Yeah, two. I need two phosphates and two phosphates. So that is all good. Let's see. 
I have a total of six hydrogens here, right? But if I look on this side, I only have one. So I know I have to put a number in front of here. What number do you think, guys? I have one. I need six. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I need to put a six here. Now let's see. I have six chlorines, right? I got six chlorines here, and I only have two chlorines here. So I know I have to put a number in front of here, right? Two times what will get me six? Ah, totally, three. And now let's just see. Three calcium, right? And, uh-oh, let's see. There was supposed to be three here, so let me just put, let me just put that in there. This should have been CA, oh, this should have been CA3PO4. And now it makes sense. That was my fault, guys. It should have been CA3, right? But we catch our mistakes. And now it's balanced. I have three calcium. I have three calcium. So that is my molecular equation. We finished the first part. Okay. Now, I'm just going to erase a couple of things, right? The only thing that we really need now going forward is this, your ions. So always make sure that you have your ions ready uh, ready to go. But all the other stuff that you did on the side, we don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to quickly erase that just so that I have more room. But just make sure the ions are the most important part. And I, I just want to stress that. Because if you get your ions incorrect, the whole thing is going to be, you know, a little wonky. Okay, now for molecular, we go to total ionic. Now, the total ionic equation says that you can break down all your aqueous, and you cannot break down, you keep your solids, your liquids, and your gases. Now, there's a trick here. That's why I like to put you know, if we have acids or bases going on in here. There's a trick. You can break down all your aqueous guys, except if you have weak acids or weak bases. So you keep your weak acids, I'll just put WA for weak acids, and you keep your weak bases if you have any. But the strong acids or the strong bases, you will break them down. This just has to do with how strong of an acid it is. The weaker the acid, it's not going to break apart. But the stronger the acid, it will break apart into its ions. So, for this one, even though it's aqueous, I know that it's a weak acid and you cannot break that one down. So you will just bring that whole thing down. You'll literally just rewrite it. You do not have to break it down into its ions. This, however, it's not an acid or a base, right? It's just like a salt, right? It doesn't have H plus and it doesn't have OH minus. And this is aqueous. So I'm going to break it into its two ions. And the two ions are the things that you already wrote down. So you're just like kind of copying. The next one, it's aqueous, so can I break it down? Yeah, because it's a strong acid. So I'm going to break this one down into its two ions. And then this one, calcium phosphate, it's a solid. We keep the solids, so this does not get broken down. Okay, so let's go for it. This one, I'm just going to say 2H3PO4, aqueous, I do not break that down, plus... Now I have to break this compound down into its two ions. I just pick up what they were, right? It was Ca2 plus and Cl minus. So I'm just going to say Ca2 plus plus Cl minus. I literally am just looking at this and copying it. But now there's just a couple of things that you have to add. You have to say the state. So I'm just going to say that both of them now are aqueous. And now you say how many you had of each. So I need a number in front of the calcium. And I need a number in front of the chlorine if it's not one. How many calciums did I have? I had three of them. So I need to put a three here. How many chlorines did I have? Three times two is six. So I have six CLs. So just make sure you do not say like CL2 because that wasn't the ion. The ion was just CL minus one. So I have to put a six here. 
Now let's keep going. We have to do the same for HCl. I'm just looking down here, I'm picking out the H, and I'm picking out the Cl. So I literally just write it. It's H plus 1 plus Cl minus 1. They're both aqueous, so I'm just going to say Aq for both. And now you just have to say how many you have. I had 6 hydrogens and I had 6 chlorines. So I need that number in front of both of them. 6 hydrogens and 6 chlorines. And now... This was a solid, so calcium phosphate, I have to keep it the same. We're going off a little bit here, so maybe I can just, eh, I, th I think we got it. I'm just going to put the S down here, guys. Sorry about that. That's your total ionic. That's the end. That was pretty easy, right? The total ionic, all you got to do is just break down your ions, the ones that are aqueous. But just watch out for your weak acids or your weak bases. Now from the total ionic, we can go down to the net ionic. The net ionic is the same as the total ionic. However, all you do is just cancel out spectator ions. Spectator ions are the ions that are the same on both sides of your equation. They're the same on both sides of this yield sign. So you're going to be looking for similarities between this side and this side, and they have to be the same. So just make sure that you have this down for your total ionic, because I'm going to start canceling things out to get the net ionic. Your total ionic does not contain those, you know, cancels out things. <laughs> so let's see. I have H3PO4 on this side. Do I have an H3PO4 on this side? No. So I can't cancel that out. I have three Ca2 pluses. Do I have three Ca2 pluses over here? No, so can't do anything with that. But I have six Cl minuses. Oh, I got six Cl minuses. They're exactly the same. That is a spectator ion. So the spectator ion in this case was Cl minus, and I can't cancel out anything else. I can't cancel out the H plus because it's not on the left-hand side. And the same thing for the Ca3. PO42. It's not on this side. So the net ionic is just rewriting your equation without those spectator ions. So it would just be 2 H3PO4 aqueous plus 3 Ca2 plus aqueous yields 6 H plus aqueous and then Ca3 PO42. And that's a solid. And that is your ionic equation. There you go. You're just rewriting everything that you did not cancel out in your total ionic. And that's it. So done, done, and done. That's it, guys. Awesome. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. Uh, give this video a like and thumbs it up if you want to. And if you want, subscribe to the channel. It just gets the word out there that, you know, the service exists to students like yourself and students all over that are studying chem. We also have math and physics videos. So if you want to check those out as well, we got you covered. All right. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.